Hey guys, welcome back. So obviously I'm late on my video. I've been moving and I didn't have internet for like a week. <laughs> so that's been fun. Um, so I uh, just got done listening to last week's podcast uh, for episode 13, Hanging by a Moment. And I'm going to see what I think this time around. Because I mean, you know... With listening to the podcast, being older, rewatching it, rewatching it, it is interesting how you see things so differently. So this time has been a very eye-opening one, and this upcoming episode is definitely a pretty heavy one. A lot happens. Totally forgot about the dream with Haley, like doing the basketball, and <laughs> and I think it's really funny when Brock is like, "Hi, friends." Any good gossip? You two never have any good gossip. It's like, uh -huh, what's the latest scandal? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh, if she only knew. Jeez, Dan's whole comparison to Lucas being like the thousand pound boulder that had that that guy stuck in his arm and he had to cut it off. It's a terrible analogy, but I guess it tracks for Dan. Ugh. I agree with the ladies on the podcast. Lucas really does pursue Peyton, and it just sucks that Peyton got all the grief for that because he really was just being a jerk. Like, and he just speaks so eloquently, so I think we overlook it because, like, oh, he was so romantic about it. It's like, no, you're still doing something wrong. And yet we blame, everyone blames Peyton forever for, you know, yes, she had a role in it, but it's just like, dude, he totally pursued it. Always love the Whitey moments, and I do feel so bad for his character, because it's like, he basically missed all that time with his wife to do basketball. So when he tells Keith he wants to retire... It is shocking. I always, like, I always felt Keith's moment and the shock in that. It's like, it's kind of your life, dude. Oh my god, I just love every Melee moment. I mean, he's all like, you don't embarrass me. Besides, I've seen you in that crochet poncho thing. <laughs> I love Deb and Keith's relationship. It once again shows how great just Keith is. I mean, on one hand, it's so good for Deb to have that sounding board, but at the same time, it's like, you kind of feel bad for Keith because it's like, he's always kind of like, almost like on the outside looking in because he wants to be with Karen and then like, you know, he has this terrible relationship with his dad and his brother, but not his sister-in-law. So it's like, but he's just, at the same time, he's just an all around good guy. And oh my God, when that chick on the beach runs into Dan and she's all flirting and he's flirting back, I just hate that moment because it's like, dude, you are supposedly supposed to be trying to work things out with your wife and here you are flirting with this woman. It's no wonder Nathan was the way he was because this is where he got his, you know, role model and it's like, oh, just makes me so much happier for Nathan's growth. Oh my God. Nailey. I really do feel bad for Brooke because she really is falling. She's opened her heart and it's like, it goes back to that saying, you know, even the good guys can screw you over, you know, it just sucks. Oh my God. I, again, I feel so bad for Brooke when she's like, you know, I want to hit it off with your mom. And she's like, I'm not close to my mom. It's just like, my heart goes out to her so much in that moment. I, the conversation between Peyton and Haley, I just, I, even before the podcast, I've always, even originally watching One Tree Hill, I always appreciated how just mature and just centered and like, just Haley knew Haley. Haley knew herself, I felt like. She was really put together, very mature, and she just always says it so straightforward, and I appreciated that in this show, I think. Um, so I always just, I gotta give a shout out to that, because it's like, Haley was like one of my fave characters, hands down, because she's one half of Naley. Okay, so like, I love when Whitey asks Nathan, have you, have I taught you anything? And he's like, I move my feet faster. 
and when playing and he's like well that's something it's like whitey i love you but maybe nathan wasn't the one you should have asked <laughs> i think it's so cute how nathan's like tutoring Haley and how to throw a basketball since she's been tutoring him of course you know dan has to come ruin it with this whole what's this oh i'm giving her some pointers oh i bet yeah you gotta be gross about everything oh oh I think this episode is really hard for me because it's like I know how excited Keith was to have Karen back and knowing what's coming in this episode it's like <sighs> I never understood how throwing a basketball through a hoop would make or break you in PE but yeah and I love when she makes it and she's just like yeah <laughs> Keith is just being the nice guy coming to check on his moronic selfish childish brother and of course, Dan has to lash out like the petulant little bitch he is. And it's just like, oh, you mean, yeah, just another mistake. And, and he has the audacity to call Keith malicious. Dude, were you looking in the mirror on that one? It is amazing how Dan has this ability to just literally turn everything around and blame everyone but himself. True narcissistic sociopathic path. Oh my God. You know, it's funny. I've heard Dan say these things over rewatching, and I just, it's so interesting how the psychology, you know, as you grow, you learn things, and it's like, God, everything he's saying is just such a projection. He's just projecting, and it's like, all he wants to do is just tear down everybody and make them question because he himself is so unsure. I feel like he is, his character. Even though his brother tore him down or tried to, he's still saying, oh, he's in a dark place. He still cares. Keith is so good hearted. And, and oh my God. And just knowing that everything is about to go down in this episode. It's just, he's like, oh, I feel like I'm going to start the life I want. And it's like, oh God. Uh, the Carrie Viper showing up on the porch and Dan not turning her away because Dan is an idiot. Just like... Keith said Dan doesn't do well well Deb said he doesn't do well with being alone and it's because Dan nailed I mean Keith nailed it Dan can't tear down anybody if he's alone except for himself and I just have to, I love I think a little point of growth for Nathan in this episode is the fact that when Haley said I owe you one he didn't make it sexual he didn't say anything about them he said, let's do something, you know, he's try he wants her to do something, you know, with him nice for Whitey. And I love that. Okay, so when Lucas is talking to Peyton, sneaking around with her in the library, and he's like, oh, I, ha I don't want to hurt Brooke, but I have to be with you. I almost feel like he wants Peyton just because he can't have her in that moment. I know that's not the case later, of course, but in that moment, that's what it feels like to me. And I totally forgot that Haley what, like saw them kissing. Like I completely forgot about that part. I honestly think I blocked that part out because it's like, you just see the total devastation on her face of just like, okay, you're like my best friend in the whole world. I thought I knew you better than anyone. And I'm watching you do something I never would have thought in a million years you would do. Like, I felt every inch of that moment. Oh, man. I just, I, I, I'm so conflicted in that moment because when Dan finds the picture of him and Deb and then he's like, then that takes him to be like, okay, Carrie, I can't do this. But before that, he would have been all into it. And then you see Deb walk in. And again, it's a moment that you feel uh, because it's just like, Oh, there ain't no coming back from this one. Okay, so the whole argument with Haley and Lucas is interesting because not only is he completely gaslighting her and flipping the scenario, but does anyone else see the correlation between Lucas acting very much like Dan in that moment? Like his true parentage is coming out in that moment because Dan acts the same way, flipping the script. It's not his fault. So it was like, hmm, he really is like embracing almost that side of himself that he never did before. So it's kind of terrible. <laughs> it's nice to see Dan have emotion when he says that, you know, after Dub leaves, I love you. Um, you, I feel that moment 
but it's like because of him being who he is it's it's like do you really know what love is because I think some people don't oh my god when Whitey's like to Nathan you were in the library temperature must have dropped in hell <laughs> oh my god you love to yell at me coach I do not <laughs> oh my god that moment when you know Nathan's like about to leave and he's like don't give up on me coach and it's just like oh, emotional moment Ah, <sighs> so conflicting, because I'm like, you know, Nate, Haley is trying to talk to Nathan, and, and he just says what Lucas told her about, oh, this whole thing started because I was just trying to upset him, and she's like, okay. <laughs> oh, man, the wreck. Oh, God, it was just, oh, my God, I was in a wreck last year, so, like, being a wreck just, like, you know, it's just, ugh, it's, they're terrible, they happen in the blink of an eye, and, and just having Keith, I mean, uh, Dan be there, and just, he had so much concern for Keith, so it was nice to see him actually still care. That moment when Dan says, he's my son, it's like, ah, oh, where is that guy the rest of the time? You know, it's just like, oh, such an impactful moment. And I just want to say that, like, on one hand, it's like, oh my god, I love Karen's new hairstyle. And then it's like, oh, there she is at the airport. Like, okay, where are they? It's like, oh. I think they said this was their, like, winter finale. So it makes sense, because it's like, they end this episode on Lucas's heartbeat. No heartbeat. <laughs> Well, thanks for hanging in, guys. Uh, I will do the next video coming up tonight, tomorrow. Probably tomorrow or Tuesday. Things have been crazy. Still moving in. And uh, finally have internet again. So, yay! Uh, thanks for being here. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.